มสาระความรู้ก่อนคลายได้ที่ RSU วิสตอนทีวีทางระบบทีวีดาวเทียมหรือผ่านแอปพลิเคชัน RSU วิสตอนทีวีดาวน์โหลดแอปพลิเคชันได้ที่ Google Play และ App Store Hello and welcome to ASEAN Challenge, the show to give you the latest headlines, hot topics, and updates happening around your ASEAN community in two languages, Thai and English. I'm Rosalind t e p a w a n and I'm Alyssa s i t h i w o n g Kao. ต้อนรับคุณผู้ชมทุกท่านเข้าสู่รายการ ASEAN Challenge ข่าวสารอาเซียนทั้งภาษาอังกฤษและภาษาไทยค่ะ Right, and in ASEAN around us, lots of trends once again happening around our ASEAN community, and in Thailand, it's that time of the year once again where the entire nation joins together to celebrate a Vegetarian festival. That's right. So those of you going around Bangkok might notice the yellow flags with red Chinese writings on them. Of course, that indicates that that shop or that area there sells vegetarian food. Right. Many may question where the whole idea comes from, the concept of a vegetarian celebration. Well, actually, the roots are unclear, mm-hmm. according to many historians. But the most widely popularized origin comes from. Chinese opera travelers, you That's could say, right. who landed in Phuket mm. and suddenly contracted malaria, and apparently these people pledged to the god of mercy to eat vegetarian food mm-hmm. and honor the god of mercy with vegetarian food. And after that pledge, they were cured miraculously of their malaria. That's so right. afterwards, they celebrated each year with vegetarian. Ism, you could say. That's right. So every year, the vegetarian festival will fall approximately around this period, the ninth lunar month. So this year, we're currently in the vegetarian festivals, which occurred or started since October 1st and ends actually tomorrow, October 9th. Right. So altogether, for nine auspicious days, you could say, people around Thailand, especially of Chinese descent. Mm-hmm. They eat vegetarian food, and they avoid meats and you could say foul or, or strong-smelling yes. food like garlic, for example, for nine whole days, as a means of spiritual cleansing. And some actually consider it a health kind of detox too. That's right. So quite interesting. So all around, whether it's Phuket mm. and of course the origins of the the myths and legends are also around Bangkok and everywhere. Even in the north, you're going to see those flags as you mentioned, the yellow and red flags saying J. That's right. So mm. for those of you who are traveling around Bangkok, a popular area that you can still visit, of course, are having the Chinese vegetarian festival going on is Chinatown or Yawarat. That started since September 30th and ends tomorrow, October 9th as well. So lots. Of people are going into that area, of course, because Yawarat is Bangkok's Chinatown. The vegetarian festival does originate from, of course, Chinese descendants. Um, so, therefore, of course, this area is considered a very popular zone for those of you who would like to celebrate. There's performances, and as well as there's lots of food you can go buy. Right. Apparently, a lot of support coming from the Tourism Authority of Thailand nationwide. They're engaging in lots of colorful festivities all over, and as you mentioned earlier, in Yawarat. Mm. Lots of colorful parades, performances, even acts, and you could say, well, just a lot of events to really get people together to celebrate. So it's not just the food. So vegetarian festival, many would say, is limited to food, but that's not the case. Mm. So all around, you're going to see lots of divine images, floral floats. Grand openings all around the country, marking this vegetarian festival. So the whole country is full of color, even more. 
That's right. So originally, as you said that, of course, they also, besides eating vegetarian food, they also pay homage to the nine emperor gods. And so originally, besides eating vegetarian food or avoiding meats and strong smelling foods, they would also adhere to the eight precepts. But of course, nowadays, um, it's just more limited to just the vegetarian food and avoiding meats and strong smelling food. Right. So some people enjoy the vegetarian festival and pledge to avoid meats. Mm -hmm for all nine days. Some people break that <laughs> pledge. It's quite difficult for some. But as you could see, really a variety of different foods are being offered. Some more colorful vegan options mm. as opposed to what you might find for the rest of the year, especially in Chinatown, looking at all that delicious food right there. Well, I mean, nowadays it's quite easy for those of you who want to stay within the vegetarian festival and like strictly not eat meat because nowadays there's so many shops and the food variety is so vast and it's available everywhere. So many people celebrate the Chinese vegetarian festival. So it's quite easy nowadays, of course, um, for those of you who would like to join in and not break, of course, the right. vegetarian trend. Well, Thailand is also quite well known for its street food options, mm. being some of the top places in the world offering the best street food, I'd have to say, in the world. And with the vegetarian festival really taking off, taking flight this week, it adds more color to street food options. So right now, that's what we're seeing right now. Lots of colorful street food options with cakes, mm. cupcakes, desserts, all these different varieties. Very scrumptious looking. Well, nevertheless, it is important that you have to maintain a good balance, of course. A vegetarian, you know, because you can not get the protein from meat, there's also alternatives such as protein and mm -hmm. soy, um, nuts and so forth. So therefore, that could be your alternative. Try not to eat so much carbohydrates because although a lot of people avoid meat, they tend to turn to carbohydrates instead. So vegetables, soy, protein are good options. Right, because ironically, during the vegan festival, many people actually gain weight from from yes. really just all that carb mm. absorption. All right. All right, so that's the vegetarian festival currently going on in several places in Thailand. Madugani-suan, Asian around us, Kane Sabdani, Rogat, Sahin, Tesakanse, Totokrungteb, Lua, like Zangwat, Nay, Patetai, Rikat, Naka, got a pensan yak, do it, Hong Si, Lung, Loka, me, Tuaks on Si Dangi, Nishong Nina, Hakat, me, Tesakanse, good Kun, Sinza, good Kun, took one Kun Nung Kam, Patun. จนถึงวันขึ้นก้าวค่ําเดือนเก้าหรือว่าในปีนี้นะคะก็จะตรงกับวันที่หนึ่งตุลาคมจนถึงวันที่เก้าตุลาคมนั่นเองใช่ค่
exercises and presence in that area has raised a lot of anger from Indonesia that said the two countries had overlapping claims in this area, but Indonesia calls it their particular area, the Natuna Sea. But uh, altogether, the President Joko Widodo earlier launched an unprecedented campaign, you could say, to bolster activity from Indonesia, including fishing, oil exploration, defense facilities around this particular Natuna Island chain in a series of face-offs that continue between Indonesia and China. That's right. So for the South China Sea dispute, of course, the countries involved include Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam, in which China claims almost the entire South China Sea. Mm -hmm. But however, Indonesia is not part of the disputes over the claims. But however, China has, of course, included waters in the Natuna Islands, as you have mentioned, with in its nine dash line, so therefore, of course, creating quite a bit of a stir within the Indonesian um, country as well. Right, so here, altogether, 2,000 personnel from the Air Force had joined in the too long, or rather too week long exercise, and we're going to be seeing lots of more action coming from various uh, military divisions in ASEAN countries as the SCS, or as we call it, South China Sea, continues to, well, head toward a hopeful resolution, we hope, it's right. since it's been ongoing for several years now. Mm. Right. Alright, มาดูกันในส่วนของอาเซียนฮอตอิชชูข่าวแรกค่ะมาที่กองทัพอากาศอินโดนีเซียค่ะซึ่งได้มีการซ้อมรบครั้งใหญ่ที่สุดเท่าที่เคยมีมานะคะเพื่อแสดงอำนาจอธิปไตยเหนือพื้นที่ที่อุดมไปด้วยก๊าซก็จะเกี่ยวข้องกับในบริเวณ South China Sea นั่นเองนะคะ,คะเกิดขึ้นเมื่อสัปดาห์ที่ผ่านมานี้เองนะคะแล้วก็เป็นทั้งหมด2สัปดาห์ที่มีการฝึกรบกันใช่ค่ะนี่ก็จะเป็นระหว่างคนประมาณ 2,000 คนนะคะที่มาฝึกรบกันในสถานที่แห่งนี้ก็ชื่อวันนัตจูนาไอแลนด์ซึ่งเป็นสถานที่ที่มีส่วนเกี่ยวข้องกับประเทศอินโดด้วยใช่ค่ะ So we'll keep you posted on developments coming from the largest military exercise in the South China Sea so far. But with that said, let's go check out what's happening in developments in the uh, Philippines, you could say, mm -hmm. with uh, a three-month-long standoff, you could say, between the Abu Sayyaf forces and the Philippine government. Good news, three more Indonesian captives have now been released by Islamist rebels. But still, 12 are in captivity. That's right. So for the past two weeks, that brings up the numbers to the amount of hostages that they have released up to nine now um, in the past two weeks, and in which that includes three Indonesians, two Filipinos, and a Norwegian. And so now three more Indonesians have been freed. Right. But on the downside here, two Canadians had been beheaded. And so this, uh, you could say, this, this two-week uh, movement or drill by the Philippine m government mm -hmm. is quite effective, they say, in handling this, um, this ransom. Because altogether, the Philippine government is really going full throttle in rescuing the captives held by the Abu Sayyaf militants in what the Philippine government considers bandits as opposed to separatists. Now, however, in this event, they're not so clear whether a ransom was paid or not. But in the recent two weeks, of course, um, as we've mentioned, nine altogether or quite a lot of hostages have been released. And the releases come as the military has stepped up offensives to flush out the rebels from their island stronghold of Sulu and Basilane. Despite the, you could say, unclarity on whether or not the ransom was paid in the recent releases, mm -hmm. in the past, though, vast sums of money have been made from this kidnap business. So altogether, they are still working to free 12 more captives, including five Malaysians, four Filipinos, two Indonesians, and one Netherlands national still being held captive here. But uh, altogether, this is one of the biggest military steps, step up offenses to flush out the rebels, which is their ultimate goal to really flush out the rebels from the island strongholds of Sulu and Basilan. That's right. And at the moment, our president, Rodrigo Duterte, has made the destruction of the Abu Sayyaf the top security priority of the military as well, and has ruled out including it in the nationwide peace process because of its brutality and, of course, criminal activities. Right. And we'll be watching very closely to see how the military government will step up their efforts to help free the remaining 12. ของกลุ่มโจรอบูซายาฟค่ะก็ได้ปล่อยตัวลูกเรือชายชาวอินโดนีเซียเพิ่มเติมอีก3คนค่ะซึ่งตอนนี้ก็ทำใ
มีผู้ที่โดนปล่อยออกมาก้าวรายแล้วในสองสัปดาห์ที่ผ่านมาก็นับว่าเป็นการปฏิบัติงานของรัฐบาลฟิลิปปินส์ที่ได้ผลมากๆนะคะเพราะว่าเขายังเหลืออีก12คนที่ยังถูกจับขังอยู่จับกลุมอยู่เพราะฉะนั้นทางรัฐบาลก็พยายามที่จะเร่งสปีดเพื่อที่จะช่วยเหลืออีก12คนค่ะยังไงเดี๋ยวเราต้องดูกันต่อไปนะคะว่าจะเกิดอะไรขึ้น All right, moving on to some news from still in the Philippines. Of course, the Filipino uh, president Rodrigo Duterte. He's of course made a lot of headlines recently, especially about his um, trying to defeat the war on drugs going on in the country. However, recently he made a statement which might have, of course, not might have made a big offense to the Jewish population. Of course, after he made some Nazi remarks, so he has come out to apologize on that. Right. He actually. Came out and in a remorseful comment here. He said in his own words, he was profoundly and deeply apologetic to the Jewish community. He said it was never my intention, but the problem was I was criticized using Hitler comparison, and because of that, he came out to respond and perhaps uh, not consider the feelings of the Jewish community. So he did come out to recognize the comments made that it had outraged the huge Jewish communities around the world. But he insisted that the mention of the Nazi leader was to show how opponents had sought to portray him, but mm. that was not how he is. That's right. At the moment now, according to what's going on, more than 3,100 people have been killed since Duterte took office three months ago and launched a promised drug war that was the bedrock of his campaign for the elections and which he won by a large margin. Right. He's known as the Punisher, which is his nickname. And he said in his own words earlier that he'd be happy to slaughter three million Filipino drug users and peddlers. But still, there have been lots of extrajudicial killings that are still unanswered for not just uh, drug users and pushers who have died, but there have also been innocents killed mm. in the act as well, caught in the crossfires. And so still lots of uh, criticisms from the various sources, including U.S. President Barack Obama, U.N. Chief Ban Ki-moon, even the Human Rights Watch, and many different organizations to which uh, Duterte had responded quite harshly. That's right. So according to Duterte's spokesperson on Saturday, October 1st, uh, he said that Duterte rejected the Hitler label and his remarks and his remarks the previous day were an oblique deflection of him being portrayed as a mass murderer. Right. But still, despite those criticisms, it seems he'll continue to carry on with his campaign yes, of course. to the chagrin of many. So we'll keep you posted on developments coming from more It's a dialogue from mm -hmm. the Philippine president. Always very colorful. ค่ะมาดูกันที่ข่าวเกี่ยวกับผู้นําของประเทศฟิลิปปินส์กันค่ะทางประธานาธิบดีโรดริโกดูเตเต้แห่งฟิลิปปินส์นะคะก็ได้ออกโรงขอโทษชาวยิวหลังที่เปรียบเทียบสงครามกวาดล้างยาสิบติดของตนเหมือนกับอัลดอฟฮิตเลอร์อดีตผู้นําของนาซีที่กวาดล้างเผ่าพันธุ์ชาวยิวนั่นเองค่ะทางผู้นําดูเตเต้บอกว่าไม่ได้ตั้งใจที่จะเปรียบเทียบแบบนั้นแต่ว่ามันเป็นการตอบโต้จากการที่เขาเคยถูกเปรียบเทียบกับฮิตเลอร์ด้วยใช่ใช่ค่ะยังไงก็ตามก็การกวาดล้างยาเสพติดของดูเตเต้ก็คงจะดำเนินต่อไปถึงแม้ว่าจะมีการบางบางฝ่าย UN เลยคะสหรัฐอเมริกาอาจจะไม่เห็นด้วยแต่ว่าทางดูเตเต้ก็จะดำเนินต่อไปใช่ค่ะซึ่งชาวฟิลิปปินส์ก็กำลังจับตามองอยู่เช่นกันเพราะว่าได้รับการเลือกตั้งแบบเยอะมากใช่ค่ะซึ่งตอนนี้ก็ทําให้คนเสียชีวิตไปประมาณ 3,100 คนแล้วตั้งแต่ดูเตเต้เข้ามาเป็นประธานาธิบดีก็คือไม่กี่เดือนเอง3เดือนเองนะคะเพราะฉะนั้น we'll keep you posted on more developments coming from Duterte and his uh, harsh you could say iron fist policies but that said still in the Philippines a little more lighter news of course K9 friends or dog lovers should probably listen up as uh, Malaysia or rather Manila in other words has given Do respect to their canine bomb squad. Mm -hmm. Here, police dogs in Manila have been receiving church blessings from important people for their heroism ahead of the World Animals Day on October 4th. That's right. right. So this occurred on October 2nd, as you mentioned, ahead of the World Animal Day, which occurred on October 4th. Yes. And so this was a blessing in order to give these dogs. Uh, who have helped their the police force in order to pursue their duties 
as canine forces. Right, and these particular dogs, how are they respecting or how are they honoring these superhero dogs as they call it? You see here a dozen Labradors, German Shepherds as mm -hmm. well as other dogs, part of the bomb and rescue squads. They were read Bible scriptures and then they were sprinkled with holy water and blessed. And according to the officials here, they said these dogs are, all, are, are the most at risk yes. because they're on the front lines. They're mm -hmm. the first to expose potential explosive devices. And so because of their sacrifice and heroism, they're now being honored. Oh, look at that. That's Batman. so adorable. That dog. <laughs> All right, so of course some lighter news updates about in Manila, of course, and for those of you who love dogs and canine, this would absolutely be wonderful news or something to look at. A great way to celebrate World Animals Day. Yes, but meanwhile, with that said though, let's head over to Malaysia okay. for some other developments concerning tourism, mm. but from a different angle here. Over in Malaysia, authorities have become more outraged by tourist behavior mm -hmm. as a way of showing respect to their Malaysian counterpart. So over in Malaysia, we have some developments here, comments coming from Malaysia's deputy home minister. He comes out to say, recently there have been movements from tourists, especially during the F1 race, That's right. that tourists have been showing some disrespect. This Grand Prix event, which occurred Sunday, October 2nd, same day as the uh, event for the canines a second right. ago, of course. Now, there were some tourist Australians, to be specific, who might have shown their um, celebrations or, of course, their pride in the win of the Grand Prix by bearing the Malaysian flag underwear. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. See, it seems that different people have different ways of celebrating and showing respect. But mm. here in Malaysia, these tourists had come out to show celebration by drinking beer from their shoes while also wearing, you could say, mooning the audience. That's right with a Malaysian flag underwear. Now we have to understand first that in some countries, some behaviors might be acceptable. In some countries, it might be considered disrespectful. Right. So this action here was considered quite disrespectful for uh, Malaysia, of course. But however, he, they did say that we open our doors to tourists. We try to treat them as you know as well as we can, even sometimes better than our own people. But when they come here with the intention to you know, commit indecent acts of embarrassment, I think that that's not how visitors should respond to our good treatment. So that's something that was said about this incident here. Right, this is a follow-up to something that happened last year that also enraged locals. Western tourists back in June last year, June 2015, they were fined, even deported from Malaysia after posing naked on the peak of Mount Kinabalu in Sabah. And this mountain is considered sacred by many locals. So here, another show of a different way of celebration, but at the same time, some may see it as a way of disrespect, as you mentioned. So here, we'll have to see what happens as the authorities continue to investigate, considering this way of celebration as a political provocation mm -hmm. at a time where Malaysia is quite sensitive concerning the political developments there. They said they're trying to see what kind of political motive is behind that kind of uh, demonstration. รวบตัวชาวออสเตรเลียค่ะหลังจากที่เปลืองผ้าเหลือแค่กางเกงในเพื่อฉลองที่นักขับ F1 ของประเทศชนะการแข่งขันที่มาเลเซียฟอร์มูล่าวันกองปรีนี่ก็คืออาจจะเป็นตัวอย่างที่คือบางประเทศเขาอาจจะเห็นว่าโอเคทําได้แ
back to ASEAN Challenge into ASEAN Calendar. Lots of colorful events and holidays happening around your ASEAN block. กับเข้าสู่รายการอาเซียนชาเลนจ์ค่ะในช่วงนี้เราไปดูกันว่าในช่วงนี้มีอีเวนต์อะไรเกิดขึ้นในอาเซียนกันบ้างค่ะมูฮารัม Islamic New Year The Islamic New Year is on the first day of Muharram, the first month in the lunar Islamic calendar, which differs from the Gregorian calendar. What happens during Muharram? Different Islamic denominations, Shia and Sunni, and cultures do different things to mark Muharram. Fasting varies among different Muslim communities. Some Muslims fast on or around the tenth day of Muharram, also known as the day of Ashura. To mourn the death of the Prophet Muhammad's grandson, Hussein ibn Ali, some mosques have free meals, also called nazar, around the ninth to eleventh days of Muharram. In Iraq, some Shia Muslims make a pilgrimage to the Imam Hussein shrine on the site of the grave of Hussein ibn Ali. In Iran, tazia or condolence theater holds performances. During Muharram, these take the form of reenactments of the Battle of Karbala. In South Asia, similar events are known as such as Marsia, Noha, and Soas, Tabuik or Tabut. In Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago, they're also known as Hose or Huse, and are attended by people from a variety of religions and cultures. Shia Muslims, particularly those in Afghanistan, Bahrain, India, Iraq, Lebanon, and Pakistan, take part in remembrance parades or matham. During matham, men gather in large groups on the streets to take part in ritual chest beating. Some people also beat themselves with metal chains fixed into handles, also called zanjir. But this practice is controversial and has been banned by some civic and Islamic authorities. The Islamic New Year is a public holiday in places such as, but not exclusive to, India, Indonesia, Jordan, Malaysia, and the United Arab Emirates. It's not a nationwide public holiday in countries including Australia, Canada, the United Kingdom, or the United States. However, Islamic businesses and organizations may have altered opening hours, and there may be some congestion around mosques, especially in the evening and at night. About Muharram. A year lasts for about 354 days and consists of 12 months in the Islamic Hijri calendar. As the first month of the year, Muharram, known as the month of remembrance, and it's believed to be the most sacred months, Muslims are not allowed to fight during Muharram. Some important Islamic historical events that happened during the month include the Battle of Karbala. In the year of 680 CE, which enabled Hussein ibn Ali, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, and his army to enter the city on the first day of the month, the restriction of Hussein ibn Ali's access to water on the seventh day, the death of Hussein ibn Ali and his clan, called Al Al Bayt, on the tenth day of the month. Memorial Day for Late King Norodom Sihanouk. The official day of homage to Late King Father Norodom Sihanouk falls on the 15th of October. The day is set by the Cambodian government as the Memorial Day for former King Norodom Sihanouk. The day is also included in a sub decree on a, the public holiday calendar for 2016. The circular issued by the government requires all ministries, institutions, public and private enterprises to organize the Memorial Day in accordance with Cambodian custom and tradition. It also instructed all Cambodian embassies and consulates general to foreign countries to hold the day in accordance with national prestige and pride on the international arena. The most revered ex-King Norodom Sihanouk of Cambodia died of illness at the age of 90 in Beijing on October 15th, and his body was transported to Phnom Penh by Air China Jumbo Jet on October 17th. The country announced a week of mourning from October 17th to 23rd, 
and the body of the king father will be lying in state at least three months at the royal palace before the body was cremated. Born on October 31, 1922, King Sihanouk reigned the country from 1941 to 1955, and again from 1993 until his voluntary abdication on October 7, 2004, in favor of his son, the current King Norodom Sihamouni. Sihanouk was the king who led the country to gain independence from France in 1953. He's been a present throughout decades of political and social turmoil in Cambodia, despite long periods of exile overseas. He was named the father of independence, territorial integrity, and national reconciliation and unity. He suffered from various forms of cancer, diabetes, and hypertension, and has been treated by Chinese doctors in Beijing for years before his death. That was ASEAN Calendar on ASEAN Challenge this week. Time for a short break. When we come back, ASEAN interview ahead. Stay tuned. Pakan sa kroka. Welcome back to the show. You're watching the ASEAN Challenge, and it's time for our ASEAN interview. We have an interesting topic for those of you who love car racing, of course. Let's check it out. Championship leader Nico Rosberg is looking to extend his lead with victory in Sunday's Malaysian Grand Prix, while Mercedes look all but certain to wrap up their third straight Formula One constructors' crown. The champions have won all but one race this season and arrive at the Sepang Circuit 222 points clear of the closest challengers Red Bull and 237 ahead of Ferrari. With a maximum of 215 points available from the five races remaining after Sunday, Red Bull and Ferrari can only hope something keeps Rosberg and Hamilton off the podium. With the race moving to October from its recent early season March slot, Mercedes could become the first team to clinch the constructors' crown in Malaysia since Ferrari in 2000. Rosberg is currently eight points ahead of his British teammate Lewis Hamilton, with six races remaining. Speaking about leading the championship, Rosberg said at news conference in Sepang on Thursday, the 29th, "It's not that I don't think about it," he said in his own words. "I mean, I'm aware of the situation. I'm aware of the points and whatever else. It's fine." I try and focus on on the the race weekend that I have it you know in front of me because it's been working really well for me to just to do that and not think about anything else and um, that's it. So I want to win here in in Sepang and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Triple champion Hamilton, who turned a 43-point deficit into a 19-point lead with a streak of six wins from seven races heading into August summer break, will try and hit back with what would be his 50th win. Compatriot Jensen Button making way for rookie Stoffel Vandoorne at McLaren next season will also be in the spotlight as he lines up for his 300th start. It means I've been around for a hell of a long time.、Uh, you know, when I remember when Rubens got to 300,、uh, it was unbelievable that he'd reached 300 Grand Prix. I was like, I'm, I'm never going to race for that long. I remember when I started in 2000. I'm not going to give my life story, but、um, when I started in 2000, I remember speaking to my dad, and he he was saying, "How long do you think you're going to race for? Do you think you're going to race in your 30s?" I'm like, "No, I'll be done by the time I'm 30 years old." And here I am at 36, and、uh, this weekend start my 300th Grand Prix. So it definitely sucks you in Formula One. It doesn't let go for a long time, as long as you're performing. So.、Um, It's been a a great ride to 300.、Uh, lots of ups and downs, as every career will have.、Um, and the important thing is that you stay on top of those bad times and you enjoy the good times as as much as you can, because you never know how long they're going to last. 
Force India driver Nico Hulkenberg said his team is aiming to stay in fourth place in the Constructors' Championship. And with Williams just one point behind, they will have to keep working to keep their advantage. Uh, I mean, we're doing well, um, especially, you know, since Barcelona, the second half has been uh, quite successful. Um, and, you know, the, the scores and the points back that up. Um, but obviously, you know, still a long way to go for us. Uh, we definitely aim uh, and target that fourth place. Um, but, you know, Sunday night in Abu Dhabi, that's uh, when we count everything and that's when we have to be ahead. So um, now it's, you know, a tight margin. Um, they're not going to, you know, give it to us for free. So we'll have to work for it and, you know, uh, yeah, make it work. Williams driver Felipe Massa, who will retire at the end of the season, wants to finish well to get fourth for his team in the Constructors' Championship. Uh, in the way you can say, ah, oh, you have less pressure now, but we have a lot of pressure, you know, with this fight uh, with uh, Force India. So I just want to give everything I can uh, to finish uh, well, you know, to uh, get the fourth place in the championship. And they enjoy every race, enjoy every moment, and uh, you know I'm still uh, really uh, happy with my decision. So I'm sure uh, it's a lot to do in life uh, for this second step. So as uh, Jensen was saying before, uh, it's really long career. So even if we are pretty young, you know when you stop uh, on the sport, it's, you know you stop pretty uh, young. I mean he's 36, I'm 35, and. Uh, uh, you like uh, retired, you know, <laughs> so uh, that's why, you know, it's still a lot of things to do in life. So I'm really ready for that. And that wraps up ASEAN Challenge this week. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again very soon next week. For now, สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ